Thompson Speedway Motorsports Park again plays host to the season finale for the NASCAR Wheeland Modified Tour. The crowning of a champion will happen here today in the northeast corner of Connecticut. The action heats up next on NBCSR. That's 32-year-old Holtzville, New York native Justin Bonsignor, who has dominated the year from the drop of the green flag at Jennerstown, Pennsylvania in early June. Now, if he finishes 23rd or better tonight, he is a two-time champion. Six-time champion Doug Kobe still has a shot at the title, and he's put his car in the best spot. He won the pole. He rolls off first today. Welcome to the Sunoco World Series 150 from the Thompson Speedway Motorsports Park. I'm Rick Allen. PA announcer Matt Buckler and 1993 NASCAR Modified Champion Rick Fuller will have the call of the racing action today. The weather today, New England fall conditions again as the temperature sits at 58 degrees, a slight wind blowing out of the southwest at 8 miles per hour, and there is no chance of rain. The sun is shining down on us. Taking a look back at the 2020 season with one race to go, Justin Bonsignor came out of the gate swinging, winning the first two races of the season at Jennerstown and White Mountain. Doug Colby and Craig Lutz found victory lane in races three and four. Then it was Bonsignor getting his third win of the year at Monadnock. Bobby Santos won the only race he entered, and it was the big one at New Hampshire Motor Speedway during the full throttle fall weekend. And the hottest driver of late has been the 85 of Ron Silk, winning races six and eight at Thompson and Stafford. Looking at points after eight races, Justin Bonsignor leads over Doug Kobe by 27 points. So it's pretty simple. If Justin finishes 23rd or better today, it doesn't matter where Doug Kobe finishes. Justin will win his second NASCAR Wheeland Modified Tour Championship. Doug Kobe, who is still in this championship hunt, did the best he could during qualifying. He put it on pole and putting the pressure on Justin. Doug had this to say about his lap. It's always nice to end the season on a high note. We were fastest in practice and uh, was able to get the pole yesterday with a really solid run. And just seems like this weekend, the track's a little weird for everybody. It seems like times are a lot slower than we're used to here, and everybody's struggling for grip up off the corner. But our Mayhew Tools number 10 had a ton of grip in qualifying and put her on the pin. Now for the call of the racing action, we send it to the PA announcers, Matt Buckler and Rick Fuller. Rick, what is on your driver's mind when uh, you're having these pace laps and you're getting ready to go to work? Well, you've got plenty that you're doing in there right now, Matt. They're swerving back and forth. They're trying to get heat in the tires. Uh, they're dragging the brake, trying to get the brakes warm so that when they launch down into the first corner, the car stops. They're checking their gauges. They're making sure the belts are tight. I mean, they're, they're busy, these four laps. Um, it, you know, it doesn't give them a lot of time to really worry about the start. So as they come out of turn four, we want everybody, get on your feet, wave whatever you have, show the drivers your support as they get ready for the final race of the season. Let's give our field a great send-off at the World Series. And they appreciate your support. Rick, did you ever look out and see the uh, people waving and stuff? And if you did, what did you? What were you thinking? What are you kidding? I mean, look at some. These guys are waving back. I know I used to. You know, without fans, there isn't a sport. Although, again, in 2020, there is in some places. But, you know, I mean, it, this is all for the fans, and these guys love that. And Doug Kobe, even though he is sitting on the pole, he has elected to go on the outside. Patrick Emmerling underneath him. And we are ready to turn the ignition key on 150 laps of fury. So get ready to light the fuse. Doug Kobe on the outside. Let's see who gets the jump. It will be Kobe on the outside. He might have got a nudge from Ronnie Williams. And the leader in the second turn is Kobe. Here comes Williams, and he moves into second ahead of Everly. Yeah, and it looks like he's bringing Pastriac with him. And the outside definitely looked better on that start, Matt. And behind Pastriac, and now going to the outside, 
A good move by Everly. So he moves into the top three. Pass react is behind him. And John McKennedy, he is breathing napalm on the outside as he tries to get around Bonsignor. And Bonsignor, he is in sixth place and now being challenged by Goodale. The outside groove definitely is a place to be. Oh, yeah. Goodale got just a little bit loose there, but it's definitely better than the bottom. And, that, and that's where you're going to see Bonsignor want to get to. And there he goes. And Bonsignor, remember, has to finish in the top 23, regardless of what Kobe does to put a padlock on the championship. Best battle might be between Pass React and, and now a yellow comes out for the first time. And it is a 14 car of the rookie driver, Corey Oslin, who gets tangled up in turn number three, bringing out the yellow on lap number three. So they come out of turn number four. And it will be Kobe getting the jump. And let's see if Pass React can deal with Ronnie Williams in the fight for second. Yeah, Pass React's going to fill that hole. The top is definitely better early on here, Matt. Look at Eric Goodale taking advantage of the outside giddy-up to move to the outside of Ronnie Williams. And he is going to inv invade his way into third place. Yeah, you see Justin stuck on the bottom again. And he's losing spot after spot. He just needs to have someone give him a break and let him up top. And right now, he is running far back as Bonsignor is in the number 10 spot. And right now, he is still on the inside. Kobe is in the lead, but the drama involves Bonsignor. Ronnie Silk right behind him in the 85, and nobody will allow him to get to the top. Yeah, Silky's more worried about winning this race and not cutting any break to Justin. You know, he'll, you know he, he can run down there. He's just going to lose a couple of more spots, I hope. Well, when he crosses the line, Justin Bonsignor is in the number 10 position. Yeah, he's got a chance to fall right in here, uh, right behind. Uh, so, no, he's going to go, get up in front of him here. Good for him. So he is able to get where he needs to be on the outside in front of Ron Silk. The leader for the first 11 laps has been Doug Colby as he is leading by three-tenths of a second over Eric Goodale. Now it is Ronnie Williams. He has gotten to the outside, and he is going after the back bumper of Chris Patriak. Yeah, Chris's car doesn't seem to be getting off the corner as well as he'd probably like it to, and Ronnie Williams is definitely going to try to capitalize on that. And right behind Ronnie Williams is Woody Pitcat in car number one. We check out the fight for fourth, and look at Williams. He barnstorms his way underneath Pass React, almost made it stick, and Ronnie Williams is not giving up. Yeah, that was a really aggressive move on Ronnie's part. Uh, you know, I know Pass React is slowing down just a little bit, but uh, that almost cost him both. We'll be right back with more of the Wheeland Modified Tour on NBCSN. Welcome back to the NASCAR Wheeland Modified Tour on NBCSN. So the top three battling for position with Doug Colby, who has led virtually every lap, although Goodale did give him a battle, and Craig Lutz, he has two career wins, and he is lurking in the top three. Yeah, the top three have pulled away by about eight or ten car lengths from fourth place. And, uh, you know, I don't think that they're satisfied with the speed that Doug's trying to run. And they're going to try to take it. And Goodale almost peaked underneath. He thought better of it. And Goodale now makes a statement down low. And he is going to try to take the lead from Kobe. And once again, he didn't have enough juice. So he retreats behind the 10 car. Well, Goodell has to worry more about the car behind him as opposed to taking the lead. You know, he's, he's in the mirror right now. You can see he's full of that. <laughs> okay, he is going to try to twist down low against Kobe. So he's caught between a rock and a hard place. The rock is uh, Kobe. The hard place is Craig Lutz. And Goodale was stuck in the middle. Yeah, Goodale's stuck in the middle. And Lutz actually may be the faster car of these three. And he's just trying to be patient. On the last lap, you are correct. Lutz running a 19-327. And that's better than the two guys in front of him. Yeah. And again, I, I can't emphasize it enough. All Colby's trying to do is run just fast enough to keep these guys behind him and not use his stuff up. Goodale into the wall. Or keeps it off the wall, but he is in trouble. Yeah. 
I'm not really sure what happened there, Matt. It looked like there may have been a little bit of contact uh, from behind. And Lutz was a guy behind Goodale, and uh, we take a we see the driver moving around as Eric Goodale has had a frustrating season as his best finish all season long has been ninth. So the outside has been great on these restarts. We'll see if it is the power alley again as we get ready for a restart. And Kobe comes out of the gate in a hurry. And Ronnie Williams is following McKennedy. So McKennedy trying to get by Lutz. As Lutz trying to squeeze him, but it's McKennedy. He moves into second, and Ronnie Williams is following his coattails. And Williams moves into third. Here's McKennedy going for the lead. Didn't have enough juice, and Colby protects his spot. Yeah, McKennedy tried to make the bottom shot on Colby there, but it, it just wasn't, you know, he wasn't in deep enough, and it wasn't going to work for him. So right now, he has to uh, be perched behind the back bumper of the 10 car. Here comes McKennedy again, this time with more authority. Yeah, Doug Colby's driving a little bit defensive there. He, you know, he's coming out of four down here. He's uh, kind of running the block a little bit, but McKennedy's going to make this pass. Lap number 30, McKennedy trying to hold off Colby, and he does. New leader, John McKennedy. John McKennedy trying to end the season with his first win of the year. Ronnie Williams holding off Craig Lutz. And Ronnie Williams, he wanders to the outside of Colby. Yeah, I don't think Craig Lutz is uh, satisfied in fourth place here, but he should be. There's another restart. He'd be in a better spot. Do you think of that? Oh, absolutely. I, you know, I want to be further up. I want to be third, but I'd rather be in a good spot for a restart. So you think of even numbers. Absol and right now, it is Lutz in fourth. Absolutely. Pit cat behind him in fifth, but the man setting the pace is John McKennedy from Chelmsford, Mass., 33 years old, and he is fattening his lead over the 10 of Kobe. And McKennedy, he is uh, trying to lengthen his advantage. Now going down low, Woody Pitcat, as he is. Uh, that is Watson. Watson is his third, so he is in an odd number position, but he is third and breathing down the tailpipe of Doug Colby. Yeah, that was a real power move by Craig Lutz going into one underneath uh, Ronnie Williams. That car is definitely working well for him. We haven't seen too many bottom shots pay off this weekend, but Lutz executed one there. Silk is making a move, so Ronnie Silk got by Everly, and he is now in sixth place. And the 85, he got by the 07, and now the car immediately in front of him is a one driven by Woody Pitcat. Yeah, Woody Pitcat just made a move on Ronnie Silk, too. I wonder, you, you got to wonder, maybe Ronnie Silk having a problem with the car backing up. So he probably can't wait for the pit stop right now. Pitcat in car number one. And Bonsignor is starting to pick things up, uh, Rick, as uh, Justin, he is uh, in 11th place. So uh, he has to be in the top 23. But right now, I think he has other thoughts in his mind, like how do I get by Dave Sapienza? Yeah, he's trying to get into the top 10 in case there's a caution. So at least he can be on the outside roof for the first time today. So that would be a very important pass for Bonsignor because it would give him uh, odd, uh, an even number of uh, restart. And we got Craig Lutz has moved into second place around Doug Colby. So Colby, who uh, led for the first 30 laps, has now dropped to third. And it is John McKennedy. He is uh, leading the charge. And he, Craig Lutz, do you think he has a good enough car to catch uh, McKennedy? I think he does have a good enough car to catch McKennedy, but does he have to? You know, you got to remember, Doug Colby, he's doing what he has to do. He just wants to be around the front for when the pit stop comes and not use up all of his tires. And the only even number on the restart, which is not good, is second. Exactly. Because you have to go to the inside because the leader gets the option, and he would choose the inside group. So it is still McKennedy, 41 laps in. And Justin Bonsignor is running in 11th. 
McKennedy all by his lonesome. But there is Bonsignor trying to get underneath Sapienza, and Sapienza is driving him hard. Yeah, he is. He he's not really willing to give this up. You know, and he's you know the car looks like it's really loose to me, Matt. I don't know why he's fighting so hard for that spot. And Sapienza, he almost uh, got tilted on the last lap. Uh, Ronnie Williams holding uh, his competitor off. There is Kobe, and right behind him is. Right behind Kobe is this is a spin in turn three, Matt. And that I can't see the numbers. It looks like maybe Matt Swanson in the well, it is Hosfeld. Chuck Hosfeld is in the two, and the 66 car is also in trouble. The NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour from Thompson Speedway Motorsports Park will be right back. Burger King. Welcome back to the Sunoco World Series of Speedway Racing from Thompson, Connecticut. Hosfeld out uh, before even the 50 lap mark. Tell us what happened up there. Yeah, um, Timmy and I got together. I don't know if he tried a shot on the bottom. My guy said that his brakes locked up, so I think he tried to dive to the bottom, and when his brakes locked up, we ended up hitting each other. Uh, really unfortunate for my team. Uh, Steven and Bob Fuller and my guys put a lot of work into the car to make ourselves better this week, and uh, I'm glad everyone's okay because it was a pretty wild ride. So the drivers are scrambling to get in their proper restart positions as we are approaching the 50-lap mark. Craig Lutz on the inside, Doug Kobe on the outside, or uh, John McKennedy on the outside, Doug Kobe restarting in third, and we have Woody Pitcat going on to pit road. He's and got a flat is, right front, Matt. And that is a tough break to him because he would have restarted in fourth. Instead, it's Ronnie Silk who's going to work against Lutz. Boy, that's an early Christmas present for Ron Silk. Gets into the outside, but he can't take advantage of it. And Lutz protects his second place position. Yeah, Lutz uh, wandered up the racetrack a little bit further than, uh, than he probably should have, but uh, no harm, no foul, Matt. And settling into third is Silk. Now we have a side-by-side -side battle for fourth and fifth as it is Doug Kobe duking it out with Patrick Emmerling. Emmerling is on the outside. And Woody Pitcat, they have changed a tire, and he is back out on the track. And Justin Bonsignor is right behind Doug Kobe. Bonsignor in sixth. So he is up in the high groove. Remember, if he finishes 23rd or better, he will win his second championship in three years. Right now, Patrick Emmerling. Remember, he started on the inside at the start, lost some positions. Now, Bonsignor working against Doug Kobe. If he finishes ahead of Kobe, we won't have to do any of the arithmetic at the end of the race. Well, that's good, Matt, because math isn't my strong point, but Kobe is not satisfied where he is. He wants every position he can get. And he is going after Patrick Emerley, goes down low in an effort to get that spot. And once again, too much firepower for Emerley in the 0-7. He is fourth, Kobe fifth, and Bonsignor is right behind him. And Bonsignor, he took a nose dive down low to try to get underneath Kobe. And uh, he will play the waiting game. Here is Kobe exploding. And Emerley looked like he got sideways coming out of the corner. But Kobe still couldn't get by him. Yeah, you see they're running two completely different grooves down there in turn four, Matt. Uh, Doug Kobe's running on, on what we call the patch. And it, it, you get a lot more bite coming off the corner that way. Where Emily, he goes above it. And then he tries to cross back around it. And it makes the car loose. At least that's what I always felt. So Kobe continues to pester the back bumper of the Emily car. Here he goes down low again. Does he have enough muscle? Not yet. And what's Kobe going to try to do? He has tried everything in his repertoire, and nothing has worked so far against Everly. No, it's not. I mean, and again, it's too early to start really using these tires up. I mean, you don't. You, you want to have something left in case this goes green the rest of the way, Matt. Well, we are at lap number 55, and in a perfect race, a caution would come out around lap 75, and people would go in for tires. Right now, Emerley, close call there for Kobe, but he still can't get by him. And Bonsignor, what is his mindset? Running behind Kobe, does he really want to press the issue? I, I mean, I don't think Justin wants to, wants to press the issue on Doug Kobe. He just wants to keep him in his windshield. He wants to know right where he is at all times. 
Kobe came the closest yet to getting by Everling. And again, he is stymied. And he is not going to give up. So that is the best battle on the track. But Kennedy is leading. But Kobe hanging on to fourth by his toenails. Yeah, you know, Justin Bonson, you might be just trying to get into Doug Colby's head. You know, just by following him. And you, know, you see he's high, he's low, he's all over the place in the mirror. And he might be, maybe he's trying to get him to make a mistake. Oh, he hasn't made one yet as he continues to hound and surround that number 07 of Emerling. And Bonsignor is in the neighborhood. John McKennedy is leading Craig Watts by seven tenths of a second. And he is on easy street at this time of the race. John McKennedy, 33 years old. He has started the weekend third in the point standings. And he has one win in his career. A little stutter step that time and to return one. That wasn't really a stutter step. That's the character of the Thompson Speedway. There's a bump over there right at the old pit gate. And if you hit it just right, it feels like a rocket horse getting into the corner. Okay, so McKennedy felt that feeling. Getting by Andy Jan Kowiak. As Jan Kowiak is no longer on the lead lap. Here comes Craig Lutz to the outside. And Monsignor continues to pressure Colby, who continues to pressure Emerly. Yeah, I mean, these, you know, this is the tightest battle on the racetrack right now. Everyone's just trying to settle in and get some laps to maybe get to halfway. And these guys are just torturing each other. And administering the torture, Doug Kobe in the Mayhew Tools, number 10 car. Now will Jan Kowiak play a factor? He gets down low and Kobe has the room he needs to get by. Jim Kowiak might be flirting with a minimum speed problem here. Uh, he's you know, he's uh, gone down a few laps since that last incident. Now getting by Gary Byington, or trying to, is Patrick Emerling. So he is able to move. So is Kobe. So is Bonsignor. And we see Emerling. He really goes high in the corners. And that has worked. Yeah, he's definitely, he runs the outside. I mean, that was always the preferred groove here with his more rubber on the racetrack. But uh, it seems to be working good for him today. The NASCAR Wheel and Modify Tour from Thompson Speedway Motorsports Park will be right back. Welcome back to the NASCAR Wheel and Modify Tour on NBCSN. Here is Bonsignor back in front for the first time. Not back in front, but has the lead. So when the leader wins the race, you don't have to do any arithmetic, and that's what Bonsignor, he is your pace setter right now. Yeah, he just wants to make it easy on all of us. And Silk doesn't want to make it easy, as he's going to put some pressure on Justin Bonsignor. So what a magical mystery tour this has been for Bonsignor. Now McKennedy trying to make a move. Here is Silk, yeah. down low, but a little caffeine twitch for the number 85, and he lost his momentum. Yeah, the 85 looks fast. He's just going to figure out a way to make it, make the pass without using up too much tire, so it's got to be a quick one. So he is counting the back bumper of Justin Bonsignor. The 46 of Craig Watts is in third. Room on the inside for Silk, but he's not quick enough to take advantage of it. Uh, Justin changed his lane there, his line, just a little bit. I don't know if it was to take some of the momentum away from Silk, but it seems to have worked. Let's see what Silk does this time, and he has to be careful because Watts is breathing down his fire suit, and Silk took it down low didn't have enough so he plays a waiting game and you see what Silk wants to do is to try to make this move as quickly as he can so he can save some rubber. Yeah, well you see that McKennedy is starting to roll into this picture too. We got a, got a car spun over in turn two That's and Tommy the caution Catalano. is out. Tommy Catalano in car number 54 has brought out another caution on lap number 93. Justin Bonsignor picks the outside on the restart. And Ronnie Silk, let's see how tough he can compete on the inside. Oh, you know Ronnie's going to be tough. So it'll be lap number 97 when they hit the line. And Silk got a little bit of a slight advantage at the start. But Bonsignor settles back into second. Ronnie Silk, he is able to gain the lead. 
Johnny Silk had, uh, like you pointed out, Matt, a little bit of an advantage. Um, and I, it, I think it just kind of, we got a problem in turn four. Everly, one of the cars involved, Doug Colby. Doug Colby in turn four. Yeah, Doug's got serious damage to the right front of that car and the rear. The back of the car looks like a crumbled wad of paper. As that rear car disintegrates on the number 10 of Kobe, he started on the pole, led for the first 30 laps, but ever since he lost the lead, he really uh, has had a struggle. And I guess uh, we said that uh, Silk had the edge on the restart, and he did. He jumped the start, so he has to go through uh, pit road. That is a drive-through penalty on Ron Silk. So we are going to see uh, what Ron Silk did here on replay. And Rick, I'm sure you are the right man to call this as uh, it was the 07 and the 10 that got together in turn four. Yeah, see what happened up front here. It, you get a little bit of jingle and then a chain reaction. It, you see the uh, McKennedy runs into the car in front of him. So the 07 has to lift and Doug has nowhere to go except get collected into it. So uh, I guess you can sum that up with the uh, four simple words, wrong place, wrong time. Correct. And Doug Kobe, we, uh, it's very rare at Thompson to ever see that car have any difficulty. And things got jammed up in turn number four. And Ron Silk, remember he had the lead uh, coming out of his uh, start, but he jumped the start, so he will have to... Uh, go to the rear of the field so he is in the suburbs and in the mainstream and in the lead Justin Bonsignor and I think uh, the Ryan Stone and company uh, will not be displeased with that let's uh, check out what happened one more look as here is Salk coming off the corner and behind him Emmerling and Kobe collide yeah, I mean, you can see that uh, Kyle Bonsignor tries not to get into, uh, was it Justin in front of him? And that caused that chain reaction. Kyle Bonsignor just hesitated a little bit coming off the corner. Nobody expected it behind him. It caught him off guard. And the result is Colby's car is wrecked. And there is a Kyle Bonsignor in the number 22 car. Up at the front is his cousin, Justin Bonsignor. And uh, Kyle will be in the number three position, but usually the number four is a hot spot on the track, and that position will be maintained by John McKennedy. That is caution number seven. You're watching the NASCAR Wheeland Modified Tour on NBCSN. Welcome back to the Sunoco World Series of Speedway Racing from Thompson, Connecticut. The cash register is starting to click for the 51 of Bonsignor as he just has to make it through these lap, last 48 laps. 47 when they hit the line. Craig Lutz doing everything he can to get the lead from Bonsignor. Yeah, but John McKennedy's trying not to let that happen, but Lutz pulls the pass off now. And look at Kyle Bonsignor pressuring McKennedy for third. Chris Pasriak, he is aroused, getting underneath Sammy Ramo. They come together, Ramo and Pasriak. McKennedy on the outside gets by Bonsignor. Boy, look at this. They're two by two by two by two, man. This is insane this late in the race. And remember, we thought Ronnie Williams might have been finished. He is in seventh place. Pretty good comeback for him, challenging Pasriak for the number six position. Yeah, Pasriak just needs to get behind Ronnie Williams right now. It is McKennedy holding off Bonsignor. And Chris Pasriak, he's trying to swashbuckle his way underneath Williams. Bonsignor going to work on the back bumper of McKennedy. And he goes up high, maybe trying to cross over move. He thinks better of it. Our leader continues to be Craig Lutz. Yeah, Lutz is, I mean, his, his car looks good. I'm not sure if Justin has anything for him, but, I mean, we still have uh, 30 odd laps to go. And even if Bonsignor should wreck, he would be in the number 20 position, and all he has to do is finish 23rd or better. Yeah, with 30, uh, 33 laps to go here, Matt, I mean, you know, this, this uh, the race... 
is it as important as a championship for Justin? So you don't think he'll take any chances? Like I said, it's, uh, you know, win the championship in victory lane is pretty cool, but uh, rolling into victory lane is really cool, too. The Kennedy getting a challenge from behind by Kyle Bonsignor in the 22. And the Kennedy cruising along in third. It would be his third, third place finish of the year if he could hold on. But I think he wants better than that, as we still have 41 laps to go. You see Kyle Bonsley. I mean, he's just not letting up on McKennedy. He's got inside into three. He's going to move him up the racetrack just a little bit, a little bit of contact. And McKennedy, he doesn't like that, so he tries to get back at Bonsignor. But Bonsignor takes the spot, but not for long. Here comes McKennedy. They are having their own war. Yeah. McKennedy in the 7 and Bonsignor in the 22. And now payback. And McKennedy is able to get by Kyle Bonsignor. So it has been an adventuresome afternoon for McKennedy. He had the lead for a while, and now he's fighting tooth and nail with Kyle Bonsignor for third. And while these two guys are swapping spots back and forth to Kennedy and Bonsignor, the, the leaders are pulling away. They need to get organized. They need to just focus on catching the leaders. Craig Watts looking for his third tour win of his career and his first at Thompson as he is holding off Bonsignor. And Kyle Bonsignor, the countdown is started. Bonsignor is 37 laps away from a title. You know, Matt, if you think about it, that'd be pretty cool if his brother won the championship and he won the race. They wouldn't have to find each other to celebrate. No, it would be right in Thompson victory lane. But Craig Lutz could be the party pooper oh. there as uh, the Bonsignor cousins of Kyle and uh, Justin. And there is McKennedy. Boy, but Kennedy has had to work hard to keep Kyle Bonsignor off his back bumper. Yeah, but he's got himself a little bit of breathing room now. At least now, maybe we got a caution. We got a car in the turn one wall. So a car stranded. Uh, Oslin in the 14. There's a it's... bunch of spare parts up there, too. When they hit the line, we'll be down to the final 31 laps of 2020. And Craig Lutz so far has had the best car. And Justin Bonsignor has the best shot at glory. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, it is, it's definitely getting down to the you know, crunch time. But I wouldn't be a bit surprised to see if Justin uh, sends this thing pretty deep down into one, Matt. Okay, let's see what he does. He's got and nothing to lose. That's true. The championship is his with Kobe out of the picture. He does send it in. Your prediction was right. As he is battling once for the lead, he is leading by a molecule coming off a of turn two. Yeah, but he had to make that move work I mean, because now he's going to be in a deficit down here in three and four, Matt. Let's see what he does. Even with Lutz. And now Lutz surges ahead. So Lutz will have the lead after lap 120. And now Bonsignor will have to fight for his life against his cousin, just Kyle Bonsignor. Yeah, he's got a chance to get to the outside right now. He needs to make that happen. You know, at the risk of taking John McKennedy. John lets him in. So McKennedy instead goes down low as he tries to springboard his way underneath Justin Bonsignor. And Kennedy is in third. Justin in fourth. And behind them, Sammy Ramo continues to run in the top five. Yeah, this last lap, Justin got real loose out of turn four here. Sammy Ramo is having a great run here in the top five. This is the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour only on NBCSN and stream live on Track Pass with NBC Sports Gold. Welcome back to the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour on NBCSN. Craig Lutz continues to set the pace. Craig Lutz's car looks the most stable in the top four. All he's going to do is just keep doing what he's doing and stay out of the rearview mirror. And here comes McKennedy down low again as he made his left to Kyle Bonsignor. And Kyle able to handle it. Two-tenths of a second is the advantage of Lutz over Kyle Bonsignor. 24 laps to go, Matt. And actually, uh, Lutz is starting to pull out just a little bit. And let's see what McKennedy does in third. 
as every now and then he takes a shot down low against Kyle Bonsignor. And now Justin went down almost to uh, the bottom layer of the track. So he is just trying to get into a comfort zone in a safe haven and end the season with a big trophy. Right. Craig Lutz right now is the biggest cheerleader for John McKennedy because he wants, he, he wants to occupy that second place car. So he doesn't have to worry about it. They get by one of the slower cars. That is uh, Melissa Flyfield. And it will be Ky uh, Craig Lutz stretching his lead. And John McKennedy he is doing exactly what you said, occupying Kyle Bonson. Yeah, Kyle has to keep an eye on him because he doesn't want to lose second. He can see out his windshield that he can't catch the leader, so he's going to try to protect that position. Kyle Bonsignor has a second at White Mountain, so this would be his second runner-up spot of the year. Sammy Ramo has uh, drifted behind the fourth-place car of Justin Bonsignor. Then it's Ronnie Williams. And here comes Bonsignor again. McKennedy, he is able to get into second. So McKennedy, all that hard work is finally paid off. Right. And, I, and there's 20 laps, 19 laps to go, Matt. He's got time. He's got time to catch the lead. So John McKennedy, he would like to end the uh, season with a win, and he can celebrate it all winter long. And there is McKennedy now strengthening his advantage over Bonsignor. Kyle Bonsignor, Justin Bonsignor also in the picture. But John McKennedy, he has worked, had to work hard to get back in the second. As this has not been an easy day for him. There is Justin Bonsignor. When he hits the line, he will be 17 laps away from his second celebration in three years. I'll tell you that. I'm not sure that John McKennedy's catching him quick enough to have enough time to work on him. Well, right now, the advantage was six-tenths of a second on the last lap, and we'll see what happens now as we have an issue. That is Ronnie Williams. He is slowed down in turn number four. The problem started in turn number three for Ronnie Williams. So uh, you talk about roller coaster days. Ronnie Williams is a poster boy for that. He has had his moments, and he has had his disasters. So we will have seven laps to go in our World Series 150 here at Thompson Speedway. And John McKennedy, he will be restarting on the inside. Lutz on the outside. And what will McKennedy try to do to disrupt Lutz? Good restart for McKennedy. Back in front. Yo, know, Matt, that was the first time the leader started on the, on the bottom on a restart. Well, McKennedy must have known something, but he is getting a challenge from Lutz. Here comes Lutz as he is able to blast his way into the lead. Almost three wide as Justin Bonsignor moved up. But right now, Craig Lutz has the lead. Less than six laps to go. Yeah, Craig Lutz drove that thing down into turn three and really washed up to the outside. He kind of took the lane away from McKennedy, and this is payback. And Ronnie Silk is in the action. Car number 85. He came from the cemetery to challenge the third. He, all Ronnie Silk has to do at this point right here is let these two uh, ra uh, race each other, I mean. So I think he will do that. It is Craig Lux as he romps his way off the fourth corner. McKennedy trying to flag him down. And Ronnie Silk, we thought his afternoon was just about over. And he has a chance for his third win of the year. That was an unbelievable turn of events there, man. Now it is Justin Bonsignor, Sammy Ramo trying to invade the top five, but the spotlight is on Watts. Ronnie Silk. He has done this a few times in his career. When you even forgot that he was in the race, he comes back to almost challenge for the win. Yeah, I mean, and, and he's, in, he's in the right position because we're, we're, we're two and a half laps to go. If McKennedy gets to the back bumper, oh, he's not going to have a chance. McKennedy swivels around in front of Silk, and that enables Ray Lutz to lengthen his lead. Yeah, I, McKennedy, a little bit of contact between, uh, between he and the uh, 85, and that may have just taken away his chance to win this. And we are 
ready for the final lap. Craig Lux ready to win the battle. Justin Bonsignor in fourth place. He is starting to rehearse his speech. There is Bonsignor. There is the leader, Craig Lux, trying to win for the first time ever at Thompson Speedway. Coming out of turn number four with a flourish. Lutz will win the final battle, and Justin Bonsignor has won the championship. And congratulations to Justin there. He did everything he had to do all day. And there is his crew having the celebration. Those are the guys who did the heavy lifting. And one of the key parts of the race, Rick, was the pit stop. They got uh, Bonsignor out in a hurry, as they usually do. Craig Lutz will celebrate, but so will this man, Justin Bonsignor. Absolutely. You know, Stoney is uh, Justin's crew chief. Hey, I mean, he just he runs a top-notch team over there. Good for, good for these guys. Congratulations to them. Welcome back to Thompson Speedway Motorsports Park. Craig Lutz has won his second race of the year, and Justin Bonsignor has won his second championship title. Let's go to Victory Lane and hear from Craig first. You know, this place was like my arch enemy when I first started driving for the 46 team. I, would, I hated coming to Thompson. And then uh, just the whole group here, my crew chief, Doug Ojeagle, gives me awesome cars, and uh, my spotter, John Sanford, just showed me around this place. And, uh, Finally, after a couple years of running up front, finishing second and third here, we finally were able to pull it off. So let's take a look at the results from today's finale. Craig Lutz gets his second win of the year. John McKennedy has a season best second place finish. Justin Bonsignor comes home fourth. That's three wins and nine top fives in nine races. That is a championship season if I've ever seen one. Amazing job out of the 51 car all year class of the field. Taking a look at the second page, Rob Summers is the biggest mover on this page, finishing 14th after starting way back in 25th. Ronnie Williams went the wrong way, finishing 17th after starting in the fourth position. And we take a look at the final page. Doug Kobe gave it a great effort today, leading 30 laps, trying to keep Bonsignor behind him. But an accident on lap 97 threw those plans out the door. The 10 car finished a disappointing 22nd. It's time now to hear from our 2020 NASCAR Wheeland Modified Tour champion, his second of his career, the driver of the 51, Justin Bonsignor. You know, just an unbelievable season. Can't thank uh, my entire team enough, Ken Massa, his family, Janine. Ryan Stone brings unbelievable race cars every week. Pit crews on point every week. Can't do it without our sponsors, Phoenix Communications, Mark, Marie, all their all their employees that are here supporting us today. Rob and his family from Clearcom IT Solutions, Fury Race Cars, Robert Yates Engines, all our product sponsors that get us here. Um, you know, obviously it was a shortened season, but you know, nine top fives in nine races, we uh, we put a stamp on that we deserve this season's championship. Well, you did what you needed to do, and uh, you come out as the 2020 NASCAR Wheel of Modified Tour champion. Thank you. I just want to thank everybody from NASCAR, Thompson, all the racetracks, NBC, everybody that uh, stuck by this, uh, the Modified Tour this year, all the fans for sticking by it. Uh, it's been tough for all of us, but, uh, you know, hopefully 2020 will be, uh, 2021 will be back to normal, and uh, hopefully we can repeat. The final season points looks like this. Justin Bonsignor wins his second title of his career after a consistent season that saw him win three races and not finish outside the top five in any race. Chelmsford Mass's John McKennedy grabs second place, his best finish in the points driving for Tommy Baldwin Racing. Doug Kobe, the six-time champion, falls to third. The lap 97 crash took him out of the championship battle and second place. The next race on the NASCAR Touring Series schedule here on NBC is the Arkham Menard Series West from All-American Speedway in Roseville, California. You can stream it live on Track Pass from NBC Sports Gold on October 23rd at 10 p.m. Eastern and also see it here on NBCSN October 28th at 6 p.m. Eastern. Justin Bonsignor and his 51 team were the best team all year and they proved that from the first race of the year. Three wins and nine top fives in nine races. A championship season for sure. That's two titles in three years for Justin. A special shout out to all the NASCAR officials, teams, and track owners of the NASCAR Wheeland Modified Tour who have taken a very difficult situation this year with the COVID-19 pandemic and pulled off a great season of racing action. 
We hope you enjoyed our coverage this year. Congratulations to the 51 team on their second championship. Don't forget, NBC is your home for the NASCAR Touring Series, Arkham Menard Series East and West Racing, and the NASCAR Wheeland Modified Tour. This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our fans for your support, and we hope you enjoyed.